Today I'm going to react to Salmonella's uh, historical misconceptions. Uh, this is the first time I've seen this video in probably two to three years, so I really have no idea what's in store for me. Here we go. You'll share. <laughs> Hey kid. Yeah, you. I just got off the phone with the big man upstairs. And he told me that I need to clear a few things up around here. So without further ado, here's 10 pieces of malarkey that you might still be spreading. Number one, nobody was ever burned to death at the Salem witch trials of the accused. So yeah, no one was uh, burned to death at the Salem witch trials. That Those came from uh, medieval witch hunter accounts and that's usually what they recommended they um witch hunter witch hunters was actually a profession back in the the middle ages so what they would do is they would actually have these journals of recommended things to do with witches um one of which was actually drown them but um as you'll see here most of them were hung if i'm not mistaken um i'm sure he'll talk about giles Corey too who was smushed to death and um don't want to ruin his parade on that but yeah um, most of the burning at the stake sort of thing came from, came from, uh, medieval texts though. That's, that's where we get it from. But it, obviously that historical misconception has continued to today. I, I've actually went to the Salem witch museums in, um, in Massachusetts. So it was pretty cool seeing all that, but here, here we'll go. I'll listen to what Sam has to say about all this. 15 died in prison, 19 were hanged, and one was squished to death. That last one is way more interesting than any cremation, by the way. Dude was a badass. <clears throat> His name was Giles Corey. He was 81 years old and so done with the town of Salem's garbage that he wouldn't even dignify the trial with a plea. So the town stuck him between two boards and stacked rocks on top of him in an effort to draw out a confession. But every time they tried to get something out of him, all they would say was, More weight. More weight. This went on for three solid days until he finally died. Never get. So there's actually a reason why Giles Corey just kept saying more weight. So at the time, the only way to really keep your family's inheritance was to ensure that you did not admit guilt. So if you say that you're innocent, the kangaroo court, which was the Salem witch trials, would eventually reach the conclusion that you were guilty. Simultaneously to... If you admitted guilt, well, you're admitting guilt, so you can't receive your your um, inheritance rights. So that's really why he did it, because he did not say he was guilty nor innocent. Therefore, Giles Court, there's no way that the government of Salem, Massachusetts could take his property from um, his living descendants. So it was actually a really badass legal move that uh, Giles Corey did, because he didn't admit get nor guilt nor innocence giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch one can only wonder number two the og buddha wasn't the obese guy that's budai a chinese folk character meant to represent maitreya aka future buddha now this shirt is double sad number three buddha wasn't a god either he, he was just, just a guy, guy <laughs> named gautama now this shirt is triple sad no Bu buddha's really interesting because buddha is from all historical texts is actually a real person so it's just it's very fascinating that we've got a um religion based off that, but I I frankly know very little about Buddhism in general and and, and frankly that part of the world, but it, it it is fascinating to me that that happened. Number four, ever heard of a vomitorium? Turns out, no, it's not a place where Roman nobles would go to make room for more pheasant spleen and lobster eyelids. It's just a big entranceway to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of. Number five, Washington. So that's actually really interesting about that because in popular media today there's this um there's this misconception really that the romans would just basically eat as much as they can until that they would puke themselves you actually see this um in modern day literature mirroring the roman empire so pan am in the hunger games um means means bread and wine bread and games but in the, in Catching Fire, you have the capital people literally drinking drinks so that they would start puking it out, which is where that vomitorium um, term comes from. And now I guess we're going to talk about good old George Washington now. Never cut down a cherry tree in his youth. I don't get this one at all. Apparently it's supposed to paint the man in a good light somehow. It's like, Tyler, what the hell happened while we were gone? Where's the tree? <laughs> For any great historical figure, we are going to have stories about them which make them 
almost inhuman in a lot of ways. It's it's very fascinating that you see this. Um, you see these crazy stories from these leaders. You see uh, the cherry tree. Well, the cherry tree is wrong because it has a teenage George Washington. Well, George Washington's dad was dead by the time he was a teenager, so that's already how you know it's wrong. But stuff like throwing a silver coin across the Delaware River, this is just very impossible things. But they happen because we start to idolize these figures who have almost have a new persona themselves. But in reality, if you read their text, if you read what they were like, they were normal people who made normal mistakes. George Washington, unpopular opinion, was not that good of a general. He made a ton of mistakes, but he's considered too many... Um, casual historians to be one of the greatest generals of all time, which is just simply not true. But it's because he became, he has a persona that's almost greater than life now. And that's because of the years of, of um, propping up that we've given him. But just, just very fascinating how, how this happens to almost any historical figure, Thomas Jefferson, um, Abraham Lincoln, those are others, any of the founding fathers, frankly, but I'll continue. I'll stop now in the front yard oh yeah that was me got bored just felt like vandalizing something you know <laughs> hey what about my honest character number six the pyramids weren't actually built by slaves these workers were respected members of society they ate meat and worked in three-month shifts and even got to be buried right next to the tomb after oh, their death matter of fact that's more than we can say for the people working on man's greatest achievements today if i spent years of my life that's actually really fascinating i had, i didn't know that um Fun fact, though, if you want to stump some people, Cleopatra actually lives closer to us than she did um, of the building of the Great Pyramids of Giza. That's a that's a fun fact. Um, actually, the Great Pyramid of Giza was built closer to the mammoths being alive than Cleopatra being queen of Egypt. So there's a little uh, bar talk that you can you can talk to. The person will probably walk away, but still, you can talk to them. Fun fact. Life helping to build the space station, you're damn right I'd want the Salmonella Memorial Corpse Receptacle floating along right next to it. That would be amazing. Number seven, the Great Wall of China is not the only man-made object visible from space. I don't understand this one. This one makes absolutely no freaking sense to me. This is just, this just seems like stupidity to me. Like, it, why don't you see every single soccer stadium or every single um, NFL stadium from space if this is the case because really there's many of the much of the great wall is being broken down it's it's deteriorating there's not it's very like thin as well i don't know they, I, if you can't see like mount everest how the fuck do you see the the great wall of china i don't understand this one space i don't know where you dipshits got this one from first of all there's no way you could see it with the unaided eye the wall is like 30 meters yeah. thick at <laughs> most while the distance to outer space is generally recognized to be 100 kilometers up known as the Karman line to give some perspective that's like me holding up a standard size guitar pick from across the entire length of a football field and asking you what color it is also there are plenty of man-made objects that are way bigger yeah, like in terms Depot of local parking surface lots. area than the great wall so even if it was uh, visible there's God. no way it would be the only one number eight you might have heard this one before you know hitler was a jerk and all but hey he made the autobahn so at least he was efficient actually hitler didn't create the autobahn it was already okay even if he did create the autobahn who cares like genuinely like who cares like i get that he made very very good strides uh when it came to germany when it came to their manufacturing, like they started the German engineering programs with um, the Volkswagen, they started the the new military forces, and they started creating weapons. And it obviously the German economy rose from the Great Depression much faster than the uh, United Kingdom than the United States. But even so, like you were just justifying a terrible, terrible political philosophy if 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 you say stuff like this, like. My um, my family unfortunately fall, falls prey to this when it comes to Francisco Franco Spain. I'm I'm my family's from Spain, and um, there's these talk of the glory days of of this like glorious regime when Francisco Franco he was a tyrant, but they love to just prop up these terrible guys because they, and especially with with instances like this, just because they want to find justifications to 
to like them. And and I think that's that's pathetic personally, but it's it's sad as well. And that's the reason why you see the rise of white um, right wing nationalism in Europe right now. And you see the rise of all these movements who are actually gaining political power um, in Spain. The right-wing fascist party it has the third most parliamentary seats in Spanish parliament. In Eastern Europe, you see a lot of these right-wing movements gain huge, huge troughs of seats in their parliament. And some of them are even seeping down to the EU parliament. So that could be having European-wide ramifications. I'm sorry I went on a rant, but that's just this stuff just is mind-boggling to me. And, and you can see it through our modern-day politics and how... how um, parties are emerging that frankly shouldn't and haven't emerged since the 1930s and 40s. There, he just helped expand it into newer territory. In a similar vein, Mussolini didn't make the trains run on time. With most of Italy's infrastructure repairs happening before his rise to power in 1922, and even then they weren't nearly as punctual as he'd like you to believe. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to find something else to like about these fascists. Like Hitler's ele- If you want to find something to like about Hitler, Look at his crappy art. If if that crappy art didn't get rejected, there would have been a lot of people who, who wouldn't have died in World War Two. It, it may like probably there. There's also the argument that another fascist um, figure would probably take his place, and it was almost like a ticking time bomb in Germany. But still, um, yeah, just look at Hitler's art if you want something interesting to look at. Elegant way of speaking. Die! Or the way Mussolini says spaghetti. Paschetti! Number 9. Iron Maidens weren't actual torture devices used in medieval times. Basically what happened is, some archaeologists in the 1800s saw an old metal coffin and some spikes, and said, Yo, wouldn't it be wild in if we put these things up in here, so that way if someone goes in it, they get poked in their bits? You are a sick man, Cornelius. I think this also got popular popularized by a Leonardo DiCaprio movie. I'm 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 pretty certain of that. Yeah, I wouldn't quote me on it, but um I'm pretty sure it's a movie where that popularized the Iron Maiden as a torture device. Cornelius. I like it. Into the museum it goes. At least Iron Maiden was real. They were as real as it gets. Still are. And don't you forget it. Number 10, Einstein never failed math. No. He had mastered both integral and differential calculus by the age of 15. 99% chance this one was just made up to make glue eaters feel better about themselves. Well, congratulations, Dimitri. Looks like you failed pre-algebra for the third time. Afraid he still can't graduate. Well, hey, that means I'm still on par with famous smart science man. So, uh, yeah, worship me. So it just goes to... Sh so yeah, uh, Einstein was obviously a genius, and um, one fun, interesting fact about him is that because he was in Germany, and if Hitler didn't have his policies when it came to expelling the Jews from Germany, um, it's very possible that Germany could have been the first one to develop nuclear technology, but it, what happened was is that because all of the Jew Jewish scientists were expelled, those became American scientists, and they were the ones who were able to create Project Manhattan over um over the German nuclear program, which I think it's um it was like the Kaiser Project or something along those lines. It was in it was in Berlin um, when the Russians discovered it. It was very very early stages, which could have been used. Um, in the aiding of the German war effort if Hitler wasn't as prejudiced towards the, the um, what he considered Jewish technology, which was nuclear technology. I think that's going to be the end of the video. Um, remember to like and subscribe, everyone, and thank you all for your time.